Good morning, good morning everybody. My name is Jenny Kovacs and I um, just throw in this quite impromptu last minute um, Google Hangouts. So why have I done this? Well, I have just completed a six week live online program called Speaking Out Authentically in Your Business. And the crew of people that were on the call were asking various different questions. Now, one of the last questions uh, that was asked by one of my FAB clients and FAB attendees on that call um, was a really great question. And it went a little something like this. Now, she has her own business and she has quite a sad story to tell that triumphs, okay? So she was advised by somebody that if you've got a sad story in your business, that perhaps it's not a story to be shared. And you know what? I completely disagreed, completely. So this um, impromptu hangout is as, as a result of this question being asked. Now, I did answer um, part of it on the live online class, but it occurred to me that there's so many of you out there that would really like to hear how to tell your story um, in a way that engages your audience and doesn't start off a pity party, but really allows um, your audience to engage with you, connect with you, understand your story and understand why you're telling it. So I'm going to get straight in um, to the to telling you how to do this. Um, now, there are some people on this call that know me, have heard of me, and there are many of you who perhaps haven't. So just to say, I'm literally gonna apologize for the quality of this, of this video. I'm literally just shooting it from my computer webcam. Um, my hair scraped back, I've got my denim jacket on and my little white vest, and I just wanted to be able to share this because I know that it's something that will really help you. So my name is Jenny Kovacs um, and my company is Giftwish and if you're looking at or watching this through YouTube, you've already found my YouTube channel. So hi, connect and subscribe, it'd be really great to keep connected with you. If you want to know a bit more about me and what I do, I am the um, creator of a series of steps, procedures, whatever you would like to call them, a system really called Speaking Out Authentically. And speaking out is a euphemism for whether you're giving a presentation, whether you're having to speak on a one-to-one -one basis. It could be that you're speaking to that ideal person at a bar that you really like. It could be that you are conversing with somebody in a business setting at a networking meeting. It could be that you're at work, you're an employee, and you're you know, contributing as part of a meeting. It could be that you are having to run an appraisal as a manager or even be an appraisee. It could be any anything where you're required to say something. And speaking out authentically was really born out of people having those, what should I say moments. Now my background is that I have worked corporately. I um, am an ex-training manager, an ex-national training manager and a learning and development manager. So my passion is teaching people how to do things in a really easy way, which is why this broadcast won't be any longer than 45 minutes, because I believe that I can give you enough information in that very short space of time that you can actually just go out and start doing. And that's the most important thing. Go out and start doing. Now, if you do have any questions, do feel free to put your questions onto this video, especially if you're watching the replay. If you're watching this live and have some questions, you know, by all means, go to my Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com forward slash Jenny Make It Happen. So that's all the W's, facebook.com forward slash Jenny Make It Happen. And if you um, pop your questions on there, I will be able to answer them. Just so that you know, um, in order to be able to answer your questions, occasionally I'll stop looking at you as I'm looking now and I'll start doing this. So I don't want you to be alarmed. I'm not in a panic. All I will be doing is going to check to see whether you have got any questions or if there's anything that you need to know. So right now, I am going to my Facebook page, which is all the W's, facebook.com forward slash Jenny Make It Happen. Like the page, pop a question on there and um, I will show you 
exactly or, or share with you exactly how to do that. Okay. So I'm just going to type to let you know that I am live on Google Plus and then we'll really kick in and get started. So, all the techie stuff done, join me live right now is what I'm typing, just in case you're wondering. I haven't forgotten and started typing a Word document or, you know, got out of anything like that. So, excellent. So, let me get back to you. So, what I strongly suggest you do, if you haven't already, is grab yourself a pen and paper um, I will also keep an eye on the time and honour your time as being precious. So in the next sort of 20, 30 minutes or so, um, I'll just go through some really quick ways in which you can share a story. Better to share your, your own personal story um, and more specifically to answer in more detail the question that my client had was how to share a sad story. So there's a couple of different elements. So grab a pen right now, grab paper right now. I highly recommend that you do that as opposed to typing on your computer, your iPad or your, whichever tablet, whichever branded tablet you have there. So here's how it starts. So first of all, think about the elements of your story. This isn't about you um, articulating or telling every single minute detail. So the first thing is, I always say, um, if you're doing anything, start with the end in mind. And with the end in mind, um, I would ask yourself this question and actually write it down. Now, for those of you that want to work on this as as we go through this, this is how this is exactly how I prepare any training, any online programs, any teachings, anything. So start with the end in mind. So I have got my notebook and my pen. So in the middle of that paper. Right in there, um, you know, what point do I want to get across? What's the purpose of my story? Okay, so what's the purpose or what, what's the point? And if you're telling your story because you want to teach or share a specific point, then write that down. So starting with the end in mind, what's the purpose? What's the point of my story? You know, um, is it that you want to empower somebody? Is it that you want to motivate them? Sorry, I'm shifting my camera around now. Is it that you want to motivate them? Is it that you want to help them reach a goal? Is it that you want to empower them? For an example, um, a story that I can tell from my life is that I really want to show people that they can do whatever they put their mind to. I want to empower them and show them that they can, and I want to tell them that despite any circumstances, despite your environment, despite wherever you've been or wherever um, you've come from, that you can still make a difference. The unusual thing about my story is that my story doesn't have what's called a classic happy ending. However, my story isn't a pity party. It isn't a, oh, feel sorry for me, and oh, that poor lady, you know, that poor woman, what did she, you know, how did she do it? It's simply to show people that despite any circumstances, any environment, you know that you can do it, and that's it. It's as simple as that. So let's get cracking. So on your piece of paper, somewhere in the middle of it, you've now written down, what's the purpose of me telling this story, or what's the point of me telling the story? So I've shared with you what my point is. It's to tell people that they can. I often say in a world that sometimes tells you you can't, I'm here to show you that you can. So that's the first point. Got that? Hope you made a note of it because let's move your story through this. Now, um, another thing that I have um, recently really heard about, which really resonated with the steps that I'm going to share with you. And I'm going to share with you um, how many steps am I going to share with you today. I'm going to share with you seven steps, actually, of how to do this. Um, but something that somebody said to me quite recently, one of my mentors, which really struck a chord with me, is that if you're going to tell your story, there's three elements of the story. So the first part is the what happened before. 
Okay, now this sounds like really simplistic stuff, right? It's stuff that you've heard before. And what I invite you to do is to use it in a way, in a new way, or use it as if you've never heard this before. Because I'm guessing that if you have heard some specific information and that you're doing it in the way that you usually do it, you're probably really interested in listening to this because it hasn't quite worked out for you. And that's fine, so here's a different way. So basic elements of the story, of course, there's the before, the during, and the after. Now, the before part of the story, this is the bit that um, it's quite great to build what I call some context. So make, um, you know, make it clear to the person listening to the story where you were at at that time. Okay. Now, there's a whole lot of other tips and techniques and information I can give you on that. And one of the things to consider is using what I call um, really expressive language. And I'm just going to give you three ways to do that. And this is whether you're talking about your before, your during, or afterwards. Now, one of the ways in which you can really express is to think about what things were like for you. The strongest connection is how you were feeling, but I'll come on to that in the seven steps in a moment. So how are you feeling at the time? What was your environment like? So describe what you've seen around you. You know, if you've got a rags to riches story, it's really great to talk about, you know, where you've come from to, you know, where you are now. And also, what sort of things, you know, were people saying to you when they were surrounding you? Were they giving you high fives and telling you you were great? Or was it, you know what, you're never going to come to anything? Is it that kind of stuff? And one of the elements that people often forget about is the stuff that goes on inside here. More importantly, when you're telling your story, what were you telling yourself? Okay, so just to recap, we're going to go through um, the three elements of the story, how you should break them up. So there's the before. So that's describing what your circumstances were like at that time. And the best way to do that is by what you, know, what you were feeling what you've seen around you, and also what you were hearing. You know, what were you hearing? Was it people encouraging you, people discouraging you? Was it your own inner voice telling you that you were rubbish? Or was there an even quieter voice telling you, you know what, you can do this? So the next element or the next um, segment of the story is what happened um, at the time. So. The, the during, what was the thing, what was the element, what was the catalyst, what was the thing that changed you from where you were before to where you are now. And again, it's really great to give that in a lot of detail. Okay, so give that in a lot of detail so that people have got a context um, and again, and they can see how that particular thing empowered you, how it was great. So I'm just going to quickly check because I heard a little, a little bling on Facebook. I just want to check. Okay. I'm just going to refresh my screen. And um, there are chat boxes here on Google Hangout. So if you do want to chat, um, you know, just jump on and and, and talk away. So, your before story, your during story, and your after story. So those are the three segments to split your story into, whether it's a sad story or whether it's a great empowering story. It doesn't matter as long as it's a story that you have to tell. So here's the thing. If we were to break it down into how much you tell, the before section is probably half of the story. Okay. I would then say that the during section, so describing the transition, the transformation, the catalyst, the thing that changed everything, the thing that rocked your world, whatever it was, I would say that with that, out of the next half of the story you've got, that should be at least two thirds. Does that make sense? So that should be a fairly big chunk of the next part of the story. And then the piece that happened afterwards is the remaining third. So let me make sense out of this. So 50% or so, like 40 to 
is what happened before, describing your circumstances, where you were, maybe where you wanted to be, but where you were in that time. Then I would say the next big chunk would be the catalyst, the transformation, the change. You know, what happened, what, what changed that. It's like the day that changed my life type of story, you know. And then the final part will be a very brief synopsis of where that led you, where, you know, what that did for you, where that took you. And that is just to kind of bring everything together, scoop it all up so that it, it finishes that story. Got that? Great. So remember, if you've got any questions on anything that I'm saying, if you've just joined the Hangout, which I know some of you have done, if you've just joined the Hangout, then really your, um, the best place to get in contact with me is on my Facebook page, which is all the W's at facebook.com forward slash Jenny Make It Happen. Alternatively, if you are watching this on the replay, please um, put a comment below, answer the questions there, and I'll hop on every couple of days and I'll be more than happy to answer those for you. So those are the three elements of your story, your before, your during, your after. And when you're describing the story, really engage people by talking about what you've seen around you, how you're feeling, because that's the thing that emotionally connects us. And also, you know, some of the stuff you were hearing, whether it's from people around you or whether it's your own internal voice that's telling you, you know, what are you doing? Or whatever it might be saying. Okay, so I'm going to move swiftly on because we've got just about half an hour left and I want to share with you um, seven steps that will help you to connect. So, so the first thing is, why, why did I say talk about what you can see around you, what you've what you're feeling and you know what you could hear what you could hear your own voice now the reason I did that was because of step one it will help you to get connected with your audience okay so let me give you a demonstration I think that would probably be really really useful so you can connect with your audience by either asking them questions or describing a scenario so you could say something like have you ever had a job where, you know, you're quite good at your job, you're doing okay, but you know that there's something bigger and better out there for you? Have you ever felt like, you know, that your life is plodding on and you want to get to where you're going to, but you're not really sure how? Have you ever had one of those days, a Monday morning, where you just thought, what am I doing? You know, how am I, how am I going to continue? Now, if this is a more of a personal story, um, I could start a personal story with a question saying, have you ever wanted something so badly that you'd do anything for it, absolutely anything? I might even use a universal reference and say, have you ever thought about you know, your birthday or a special occasion where you've been expecting to receive a gift and you've literally been on your knees going please 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 give me give me this present I want it so badly have you ever gone through a day where you thought oh, I just really need this to work out I need this thing to happen and you've almost been having that conversation in your head where you're pleading please 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 let this happen let this work out for me so you can ask and connect in that way. Another thing that you might do is just to simply, as I described earlier, just to describe your circumstances. So here's an example of that, which is true for my life. So a few years ago, I decided I wanted to make the leap. I actually wanted to start my own business. I really wanted to train people and coach them. I wanted to show them that there are really quick and easy ways to be able to do stuff in life. And that was it. There's one slight problem though. I was an employee and I'd thought about how much I'd wanted to start a business. And this wasn't an overnight thing. This was for 10 years. Can you imagine that? 10 years, which is, you know, for some of you listening and watching, that could be half of your lifetime, you know. For others, it could be a fair sort of smaller chunk, but still a considerable part of a life. Can you imagine, and I know that you, there's some of you out there, and it could even be you that's listening to this right now, that yearns to, 
either start a business or up level in your business or do something different or new in your business. You've realized that the thing that you're doing, albeit that you might be good at, just isn't rocking it for you. You know, it doesn't float your boat. So you've decided that it's time for you to be brave and take that big, hairy, audacious leap into doing what you want to do. And that's where I found myself a few years ago. I was employed. I knew that I could really make a difference where I was, but I knew deep, deep down that I could make an even bigger difference by going out and kind of going solo, if you like. I had a really lovely office. You know, I had great space. I had a massive window. I could look outside and see nature. I could also look down and see what other people were doing in some of their offices and as they were walking outside, but that's another story. You know, and so many times I would come to work on a Monday and think, what am I doing? You know, I just really need to be making a difference. And secretly, deep down, I would sometimes be questioning myself and saying, you know, can I, can I make a difference? Can I, can I really do this? Can I make an impact on other people's lives? And I thought long and hard about it. And eventually, one day, I made a decision. So that's, that's how I did that. So step one, make a decision. Just make a decision. And hi to those of you that are, are jumping on. So just in case you've, uh, you've just joined, just a really quick whistle top um, summary. This is how to tell a sad story, but actually how to tell any story. And the first element of this story is you've got the before, you've got your during, you've got your after. Now, in the before part, you need to tell 40 to 50 percent of your story needs to be in the before. So you're describing everything. You're describing um, in a way that connects people to you. You know, what can you see around you? You're describing your surroundings. You're describing how you were feeling. You're describing what people were saying to you at the time or even what you were saying to yourself. In the during, this is the part, the, the thing that made the difference. I like to call it the day that changed my life. So what was the thing that happened where you said, no more, this has got to change? What was it? Maybe you met somebody, they said something to you. Maybe you, um, you know, had... In case of a sad story, it might have been that you had an accident, a life, a, an earth-shattering life experience. What was that experience? And again, that needs to be around 40% of the story that you tell. So if you were to say 50% was, was describing your story before, 40% was what happened right now, and the remaining 10% is, and this is where I am today. This is your after story, and this is how I got to where I am. This is what made me the person I am today. This is what showed me that fill in your own blanks. Okay? So out of the seven steps of really being able to tell a great story, um, whether it's sad or otherwise, empowering, motivational, the first part was a connection. And in order to connect with people, so get really connected with people, in order to be able to do that, then the best way to do it is to talk about, you know, what you could see around you. And I just gave a brief example. Don't worry, because this will be on my YouTube channel. And if you want to find out how to uh, get on my YouTube channel, if you go to my website, which is all the W's, dot gift hyphen wish dot co dot UK. And at the top, you'll see icons for my Facebook page, my um, connect with me on Twitter or LinkedIn, and even on YouTube. If you click on that and subscribe, you'll be able to get any regular hangouts that I do, you'll be able to see some of the videos that I've done and go from there. But I want to move on to the next point. So the next one is, in order to be able to um, connect with people, you give them an overview, you fill them in. Okay, so the overview that I did was right at the start of this where I said, I'm going to be sharing with you how to tell a sad story, in fact, how to tell any story. And I also gave some context and some reasons behind that. And the reasons were that I've just finished a six-week live online class. And one of my clients on my last Q&A call asked me, well, I've been told that, you know, I've got a sad story to tell, but I've been told that it's not a great thing to do or to tell in a business. And as a result of that, not only did I answer the question for her then, 
but I also thought what a great idea just to put this out there for you so that if you have a story to tell you can start to formulate how you tell that story too. So that was my overview. That was how um, I filled my audience in on the story that I'm telling. So the next bit is that, you know, I see and hear this so often in people that I either coach and work with me privately, um, I also work corporately, but also I see it in a lot of the entrepreneur and business world where you have got so much to share, so much to tell people. So guess what? You share it all. You tell them it all. And I often describe this as, um, imagine that somebody was uh, feeding you a nice big cake. You know, they, they got this great big cake and they said, would you like a piece? You said yes. And then they proceeded to shove it in your mouth all in one go. Who wants that? Who, who's going to enjoy that? No one. So rather than, you know, giving everything that you've got and shoving it in people's faces, why don't you try slicing the cake slice by slice? No one needs to know if you have three or four slices. That will be our secret. But have as many slices as you want, but just don't force them on people and give them so much in one go. And I can see that uh, young Katie has joined us. So I just want to say hi to Katie. And what I'm going to do, Katie, is I am going to mute you so that you have privacy or privacy. Okay. So if you're going to be giving people information, I know that you know a lot, and I know that there's so much you can tell them, but here's one tip. Make a decision on what's going to be the single most beneficial piece of information that you can share with that person and focus on that. In that way, you're getting your cake, you're slicing it, and then you're giving that cake or a slice of that cake, slice by slice, in a really easy, digestible form. You're not shoving the whole thing in their face. Hopefully that makes sense. So the next thing is, or the next step, so the first step was to connect. Connect by describing your surroundings, what you see, what you hear, how you feel. The second step was to fill the, the person in, tell them what you're going to tell them, give them an overview. So I'm just going to spend five minutes chatting to you, telling you about dot, dot, dot. The third thing was, you know, fill them in, but, you know, taper the information. Taper the information in a way that they get. Don't feed them the whole cake in one go. Don't shove it in their face. Just slice it up and feed it to them slice by slice in an easily digestible manner. So then the next step then is to teach. Teach them the information. I often say this is a little bit of a win them over, you know, because by winning them over, you can talk at somebody or you can talk to somebody. And the best way to talk to somebody is to teach them. Now, here's the distinction. Only teach them what they are asking to hear. So if you're having a one-to-one -one conversation or speaking to a crowd, maybe 100, 300, thousands of people, give them the information that they need and teach them. Nobody likes to be kind of preached at. And for a lot of you, I know that the, the story you've got is so close to your heart. Maybe the business you've got is close to your heart. Or maybe you're really passionate about something. You're an employee, you're in a meeting, and you, you know that the direction of the meeting isn't going in the way that it should be. So you really want to get your point across with passion and purpose, and that's fine. But really ensure that you explain and educate and teach those people why. So let's say, for example, you're in a meeting, and a decision's being made, and you're thinking this is not for the great good of this community of people, of this business, of this company, of this, you know, this group, whatever, or whoever it is you're speaking to. Rather than saying, no, no, I don't agree, educate them, teach them. Go through and explain that, you know, I know, Mr. Jones, it's a really great idea right now to stop everyone from working in the way that they do and, and get them to work in a completely new way from tomorrow morning. But you know what? This might shock them. You know, talk to them about, t tell them, talk to them about 
how um, you know how you are so congruent, how you're so convicted that that this might not work. Teach them, teach them your point of view. Okay. Now, if you're giving a talk to thousands of people and you've got information to share, which I know many of you have got information, you've got services, you've got products, people will be asking the question in their head: Why should I be listening? You know, why do I want to? Why do I want to listen to what this person says? So let them know. Just let them know. So the next point then is to invite or entice. Invite or entice. So how do you invite or entice somebody? Well, what you do is you kind of come into their world, if you like. You come into their world. There are many different ways, and I, it's funny because I, I've run a few workshops where I have shared how to do this if you're doing something live with people in front of you in a room, whether it's one person or thousands of people, how to entice and how to be completely credible in what you're saying. When you're doing stuff online, as I'm doing now, whether it's on your YouTube video, whether it's on Google Hangouts or, or any other um, well-known platform, for live online training or sharing or education. One of the ways in which you can do that is to paint a really great picture. And you can, cre you can create and paint a picture of the circumstances or the scenario. So let me go back to giving you an example from my story. So remember I started off by talking about how sometimes as an employee, which I was at the time, you know, I was a manager, and I actually I had to report to the board so you know my actions had consequences I couldn't make any off-the-cuff decisions and hope that they would fly I had to justify what I was doing and I just thought you know I, I enjoy what I do but there's more for me than that there's more to life than that and you know I I took decisive action I made a decision after 10 years of wanting to run a business um, by myself, I actually made the decision that I was going to do that. I went from my heart's desire and made the decision. And here's what I'd do. I'd invite you to do the same. I'd invite you to have a look at where in your life you know that you're not doing the thing you're supposed to be, be doing. I'd invite you to look at where you are right now and look at where you want to be. Where do you want to get to? Where do you want to go? I'd really invite you just to sit with yourself and really listen to that inner voice, that inner nagging voice, so it might be a very quiet voice. It sits there and says, you know, why don't you do something else? Why don't you go out and make your difference? Now, for those of you that resonate with that, you'll sometimes know that there's an even louder voice that might say, well, who do you think you are? And you know, keep um, looking at my YouTube channel because I post out all sorts of what I call I can videos. And these are designed to help you over any of those hurdles that you might come across in your life. Okay? So if any of you are getting the who do you think you are, I'm here to tell you that, you know, it's just a temporary setback. Move through it because you will move through that. So that was my invitation to you. So that was my um, next step, my step five. So entice, describe how you may feel or how you may already be feeling. So step six is to, is all around steps actually, <laughs> ironically. Step six is all about the next steps. What's the next thing for the person or people that are listening to you, whether it's live, online, offline, wherever it is, one-to-one -one conversation. Let's have some fun with this. I mentioned at the beginning that the Speaking Out Authentically series was like speaking out as a euphemism for when you speak. So it's not just about presentations. It could be about meeting the man or woman of your dreams or the one in the bar. And just for the record, I believe that there's more than one for you out there. So you're not searching for this one person out of millions. So let's just play with the steps. So you connect with them. You say hi. You tell them a bit about yourself. You ask them a bit about them. Now, here's the first thing. If you're going to connect with somebody that you don't know, the best way to connect with them, first off, is to ask them loads about themselves. Okay? 
who's ever been to a party or been out socially and someone's come up and gone, hi, my name's Jenny, this is what I do, I have this car, I live in this place, and these are my friends, and this is what they do, it kind of turns you off, doesn't it? So if you're going to connect in that environment, then connect one-to-one, -one. ask the person a bit about themselves, ask them how they got here today, what do they do? They look like they're having fun. Tell them, you know, what's their secret? Whatever the thing is. But, you know, ask a lot. Be really interested in that person. So that's step one, connect. This is a, a recap. So um, step two, now this is funny because you're filling them in on what you want to say to them, which sounds kind of strange, right, if you're meeting the person of your dreams out there in a restaurant or in a bar or something like that. But here's how it would look in this format. So step two is to uh, fill them in and tell them what it is. And you might say, look, you know, I know this sounds a bit cheesy. I was just standing over there with my friends and um, we noticed you with your friends dancing or laughing or, you know, whatever it was you noticed. And, um, and I would say something like this. I would say, and I'm really nosy by nature. I'm really curious. And I just wondered what you were laughing at because you just seem like you're having so much fun. So I just thought, why don't I come over and chat to you and, and just find out a bit about you? And I've just found out that you do blah, 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 because you've just had that conversation. So that's your that's kind of like your overview and you're filling them in. So then the next bit is you give them information and, you know, and you narrow it down for them. So remember I talked about the cake slice by slice. So, you know, when they start asking you a question, like if they say, oh, so what do you do? Here's my recommendation, answer the question. Just answer the question. Because I've heard so many people say something like, what do you do? Well, when I was six, I wanted to be a doctor. And then when I was 10, I decided that there was too much study. So then I wanted to be a, a gardener. Then I wasn't too good at school. Did you catch my drift? That's your life story. That's not answering the question. So, you know, take the information, give them it slice by slice. So the next bit is to teach, not talk at, you know, and this is a funny one, and this is slightly different in a kind of dating con um, context, I guess, than it is for speaking from stage. If you're if you're looking um, at sort of dating or, you know, arousing someone's interest in you when you're out in a social setting, the thing to do here is to um, let them know a bit about, like, teach them how you like to be, you know, teach them a bit about the sorts of things you like, you know. You might say to them, I love great conversation. I really like to connect with people who are interesting. It might be something like that. Now, if you're speaking from a stage, for example, and you're speaking to lots of people, how you would teach is, I'm guessing that you are there because you want to talk to them about what you do, how you do it. You might want to tell them a bit about um, your products or your services. And before you go in with, let's say, for example, your product is this pen. This pen, which I picked up from the Green Valley Ranch in Las Vegas very recently, or a couple of months ago now, in, in the US. Say you want to sell them this pen. Don't get up on stage and say, look, here's my gorgeous purple pen. You need to have it, so this is how much it is. Tell them a bit of a story behind the pen. Teach them about it. Teach them that when they write with this pen, regardless of how scruffy they feel their writing is, that they feel that you've noticed when you did your beta testing that, you know, 80 out of 100 people said that when they wrote with the pen, it seemed to flow on the paper so smoothly that it really helped them to write. Tell them a bit about why you're so passionate about people being able to write smoothly on the page. You know, really build the picture around the product you're giving them. If you are in the health and wellness industry, as I know some of you are that are listening, if you're in the health and wellness industry, just let people know, you know, what it is you're doing, why you do it, why you're so passionate about it. Give them some context. Let them know why they, why they could listen to what you're saying, why they could be interested in having a different alternative or healthier lifestyle. Why, when they take on board the tips and techniques that you show them, what a difference it will make to them. Educate them and teach them that. Okay? So share that with them. So entice them. 
that's the next step. Step five, you know, invite them, sorry. I always say entice. Um, there's a, a formula that I, I share with people, and um, next week you'll see something pop up on my website, so look out for that, and you'll be able to actually get this yourself where you're able to, you know, go ahead and um, actually run your own stories through these steps as well for high engagement. So invite them, entice them. So if you're in the bar, you might want to say, look, you know, I really enjoyed speaking to you and it would be great if, you know, we can speak again at some, some stage. Are you up for that? If you're speaking to your audience of like thousands and you're telling them about your products, your services, let them know how exciting their life could be when they've experienced your service or when they've got one of your products. If you're motivating them, so maybe you're a motivational speaker or inspirational speaker, let them know the difference that will be made to their life by taking on board some of the tips and techniques and things that you're sharing. So for example, on this call, you know, it, imagine, just imagine the next time you go to speak to somebody or to talk about what you do or to, you know, add credibility in a meeting or to talk to that person that you put your eye on over there in the corner imagine how empowering how great how brilliant you will feel when you walk over to them with a really strong sense of what you're going to say and how you're going to say it imagine that how great would that be for you how would it be if you knew that you could literally teach anybody anything with a hundred percent congruence a hundred percent um, faith and ability and credibility in what you're doing. How great would that be? So that's how I would invite somebody to listen to what I was saying. And then the sixth step was the next step. Show them what's next. You know, so for the, the person in the bar, it could be something like, you know, really like to see you again. It could be as simple as that. And here's the thing about the next steps. <clears throat> Quite often, people get really uncomfortable, so I've got a frog in my throat, I'm going to take a sip of my water. People get really uncomfortable about inviting people to take the next step with them, whether that's dating, whether it's in teaching, whether it's in their products, whether it's when they're speaking out in a meeting. But keep the next step really short and succinct. So my example in this would be, if you want to find out more, I've already alluded that next week there's going to be some fantabulous stuff on my website. And I'll, you know, if you're following me on Twitter already or on my Facebook page, I'll let you know that it's there and available. But there'll be some stuff that will help you to take your storytelling to the next level. You know, how will you use these stories in your corporate environment? How will you use them in meetings? How will you use them in your business? How will you use them if you're thinking of starting a business and want business ideas? It doesn't matter how, there'll be a resource for you. There'll be a resource for you that will help you to get from where you are to where you want to be. And this is whether you've never done this before or whether you've done it you know, quite a lot. So the final point then, as we wrap up, is the, the final step is what I call the heartfelt step. And this is to leave somebody with a really great emotion. So if your story was a sad story that you wanted to tell, it's okay to tell that story. The emotion that you might want to leave somebody with is, you know, however, what I learned about myself was this. I'm stronger than I thought I was. You know that feeling where you think your world's going to crumble? Yet all of a sudden, you're, you somehow find light at the end of the tunnel, you find a way, it's almost like you smash through it, you come out of that tunnel at the other side and you just feel on top of the world, absolutely on top of the world. I'm telling this story because I want that for you as well. How could you feel if you were on top of the world? How would your life be if you knew that despite your circumstances, despite thinking that you can't do something, actually somebody showed you that you can. How would that feeling be for you? And that's a feeling that I want to leave you with. The on top of the world feeling. 
So I'm going to honour your time and I'm going to end this broadcast now. So if you want to see or catch the whole broadcast, please view again and go to my YouTube channel. I'll post the links on my Twitter pages and my Facebook pages. So I'd love you to stay connected and I'd love to hear how you're using these, these tips to tell a story. So connect with me on, on Twitter. I'm at GiftWishLTD. I'm Jenny Kovacs at GiftWishLTD. You know, pop up and say hi. You know, like my page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Jenny Make It Happen. And please post a comment. I really, really am passionate about hearing what you're doing with the tips and techniques that I share with you. And I love hearing your stories. And I love sharing the stories as well. Other than that, if you go to my website and just um, save it in your favourites for next week, which is all the W's dot Facebook dot com forward slash Jenny Make It Happen. I look forward to hearing from you and seeing you out there on the online world and in the real world as well. Or should I say the offline world? Because the online and offline world are all real. So I've been Jenny Kovacs from Giftwish and sending you peace and blessings to your day. I look forward to hearing your stories. Catch you later. Bye.